Thank you for visiting the YouTube channel for BestBibleCommentaries.com. In this video, I'd like to show you one of the best reviewed commentaries on the Book of Romans. Before I do, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to this channel so you can see videos on Bible commentaries, study Bibles, and other resources that help people understand God's Word. New Testament scholar John Stott is the author of The Message of Romans in the Bible Speaks Today commentary series. This commentary was originally published in 1994. It is 432 pages in length. The Bible Speaks Today series, or the BST series, has undergone some different cover designs. I believe the current one has a uh, green and blue and white cover design. This is the previous cover design that it had. If you're not familiar with John Stott, he was one of the leading evangelical theologians in the second half of the 20th century. He served many years at All Souls Church in London, England, and he was also a prolific author. Some of the books he's well known for are commentaries, including this volume on Romans, also his Galatians and Acts volumes, also in the Bible Speaks Today series. You can see he's the editor for the series. His Galatians and Acts volume in the BST series are also particularly well-reviewed. One other book that I'll note that he, that uh, Stott wrote is called The Cross of Christ. Not a commentary, but um, it's, it's one of the most noteworthy books in the second half of the 20th century in evangelical theology. Um, personally, I read that book maybe 20, 25 years ago, and it's one of those uh, experiences that has just stayed with me ever since. And I've read the book, I've assigned the book. Um, and so if you're not familiar with The Cross of Christ, in addition to checking out this commentary, uh, please check out that book, The Cross of Christ. I'll actually put it, I'll put a, I'll put a link to it in the description box down below if you're interested in looking um, at, at that book more. John Stott was an evangelical Anglican, and in regard to some of the specific uh, stances he takes in with regard to Romans, I'll get to some of those examples in just a moment. First, I'd like to show you um, an example passage from the commentary, and like other, like most other commentaries anyway, once you see one section, uh, you will get an idea for how the layout of all of them. This particular section is Romans 8, 1 through 39, and it's chapter 11 of the commentary. And it's titled, God's Spirit in God's Children. Every section begins with an introduction, and then there is an outline, usually a, a one, two, three, four points in each chapter, followed by some subpoints in each one of those numbers. The outline that Stott provides is very preacher-friendly. It's very teacher-friendly. Actually, that's a characteristic of BST commentary volumes. So uh, sometimes there's even alliteration, but they're usually just short and sweet and memorable and accurate. So, for example, A is the freedom of the Spirit, verses 2 through 4. And then the mind of the Spirit, verses 5 through 8. The indwelling of the Spirit, verses 9 through 15. The witness of the Spirit, verses 14 through 17. So you can see that they're short, they're sweet, there's some overlap between them as far as the terminology, so they're easy to remember, and they're just good descriptions of what's found in that particular passage. Well, every section in Romans is divided up like that. So if you're preaching or teaching through the book, you might edit edit the, the subheadings uh, however you would like to, but, but um, they can just be lifted uh, from from the book itself and just use as a teaching outline in a Sunday school class, a small group. Um, they're very helpful and very practical. Uh, practical. John Stott is very quotable. Uh, as you can see by all my underlines, I've made my way through this commentary a, a couple of times, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, you, can, you can quote, you can't often quote a commentary from a pulpit. Well, some of you might. Um, but, uh, but this, this Stott is very quotable. He is very quotable, um, in virtually any ministry setting, just because he has, he has a way of making complex things easy to understand and very relevant as well. So sometimes, um, you might just want to, to quote him. That could be helpful to teaching or preaching ministry. Let me show you the table of contents. Uh, Romans in this commentary is divided into seven different sections. And in those seven sections, there's 28 chapters altogether. Uh, most chapters are about 5 to 15 pages. So, for example, Romans 1, 18 to 32 is about 10 pages in length. 
Romans 2, 1 through 16 is about nine pages in length. Um, Romans 7, 1 through 25 is about 16 pages in length. So they vary. And so another thing you can tell by that is, is there's not, not a lot of, of depth as you'll find in other commentaries. Uh, some of the reviews that I uh, considered uh, for this commentary, and I'll get to those reviews in just a moment. Some of them were saying, this is a, if, if you're preaching through the book, this is, this is not going to be your, it might not be your best exegetical tool, but it would be a great companion piece to an exegetical tool because it's so homiletically focused. It's so, it's, it, it, Stott has the pastor in mind with every sentence he writes. He has a pastor in mind. And so he does go into some exegetical or th and theological historical descriptions, but not as much as a commentary that will focus on those issues. I, I would compare the BST uh, series, if you're not familiar with it, I would compare it to the NIV application commentary series in the sense that there is a heavy focus on application in the series. So, and to that extent, to that um in relation to that, I would call this an introductory to mid-level commentary. There's no Greek at all. Um, there's references to Greek. Um, Stott's work is based on the Greek, of course, so sometimes it comes up. But what I mean is you don't need to know Greek at all in order to maximize uh, this commentary. There's also a study guide at the back, and I'll just show you that real quick. Um, I have not personally used the study guide, but it can be used by an individual or a small group or a Sunday school class. Um, if you're someone who um, you, you know likes discussion questions, uh, there's just some built-in study questions to this particular commentary, so so that can be helpful. A couple of reviews now, and um, the reviews that I like to share are academic reviews, or they're from academic journals, and because user user reviews are pretty common to find online, but um, academic reviews, uh, not so much. So uh, first, from the uh, Journal of the Evangelical Theological Society, the conclusion of the review was, Stott's analysis are judicious, well-defended, and clearly stated. One could hardly do better than to listen to this Anglican brother. From the journal Themelios. This commentary is perfect for putting into the hands of someone preparing Bible studies on Romans and useful for borrowing outlines for talks or sermons. That particular review also noted that if you are preaching to a congregation or just to an, advan a, a, an audience that's of, a, of an advanced um, you know, has more Bible knowledge than your average audience or congregation, you might want to use this as a companion piece to an exegetically focused commentary. Uh, third review from Christianity Today. I don't know if Christianity Today still publishes commentary reviews, but they used to. I haven't got that magazine in a few years myself, but in 1995, they published a review of this particular commentary. And the conclusion was this, quintessential stot. The gift given through this commentary is the diligent pursuit of God's word as our only hope in life and death. What an excellent review. Quintessential Stott. Uh, I love that phrase. Um, it's John Stott, by the way. He passed away in 2011, I think it was. So... Um, so a couple of views on a couple of example of a couple of views of Stott takes into on individual issues on certain issues in the book of Romans on uh, Romans one verses 18 through 32 and those descriptions of um, those various descriptions of sin found in that particular passage. One of the conclusions that Stott affirms is traditional biblical marriage in Romans three after discussion Stott affirms propitiation. In Romans 8, after discussion, Stott teaches that Christ did not assume a fallen nature at the Incarnation, but was nevertheless fully human. In chapter 9, Stott affirms predestination. In Romans 11, he says the phrase, all Israel will be saved, refers to ethnic Israel and that the majority of them will one day return to Christ. So there's five or six examples of Stott on individual issues. Last example I'll give is uh, regards evangelism. And 
uh, it's an interesting passage. It's it's one of the it's a nice break in the commentary. Mostly he's just going verse by verse or passage by passage through the commentary. But in uh, chapter 16, he just adds this one th- three-page section called a manifesto of evangelism, and it's his thoughts on Romans 10:15, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. I'm just, I'm not going to read all eight for you, but I'll just give you some examples to just just to get again to get a, a taste of how applicable Stott Stott's writing is. Number one, the need for evangelism. Evangelism is necessary because until people hear and receive the gospel, they are lost. Number two, the scope of evangelism. The whole human race must be given the chance to hear the gospel. Number three, the incentive to evangelism. Evangelism arises from the love and the longing of the heart. Number four, the nature of evangelism. Evangelism is sharing with others the good news of Christ crucified and risen. He has eight points altogether, and I just read you four. Um, So this is an encouraging section and highly applicable and just a, a great example of Stott's teaching. So I hope this commentary, I hope this video has been helpful to you in understanding more about this commentary. I'll put some links down below and some more description down below. Um, Please consider subscribing to my channel for more reviews on Bible commentaries. Thank you for watching. Thank you for visiting bestbiblecommentaries.com.